He repented in his spirit. He said, brother, I want to be saved. Then you baptize him in Jesus' name to get rid of those sins. God will fill him with the Holy Ghost. Now, say by chance on down the road, if he mess up again, now he's been filled with the Holy Ghost. Now he can confess with me. He has to acknowledge and go, Lord, I repented. You saved me. And I willingly, I knew I went back and messed up. I, me I know I did it. It wasn't a mistake. I did it. That's confessing. Then God said, I wash out clean. You got to be honest. That's the difference. Begin to read Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart's desire to pray to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Paul was addressing the Israelites of the Jewish, con of the uh, Roman congregation. Paul, Paul was addressing a Jewish situation here. That was a mixed church. Thank you, Jesus. And a lot, it's just like this. It's just like a person is a Baptist or Methodist or Catholic. And they get saved. No talking about saved. Baptized in Jesus' name, feel the Holy Ghost, and get in Jesus' church. Well, it may be a possibility they try to bring some of that Catholicism with them. Well, what I have to do then, not address those that came out of the world in the church. I got to address those that came out of that situation and let them know, hey, that don't mix here. So you see, as the people come from different backgrounds, sometimes you have to address where they came from to let them know what you had leaving. Now you got something new. Hang to that, I'll have to address it. So Paul said, my prayer to God for Israel that they might be saved. What else did he say about Israel? Read. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Look at Paul talking to the Jews. He said, I bear record of you. You do have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. See? You have a great zeal of God, but you don't know. Knowledge is what is known. He said, you don't have that knowledge. Read. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Look what he said. Talking to the Jews here. Mm -hmm. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Look at people. Look at church people doing that. Going about to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Listen. Have not submitted. Have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Still trying to hang on to old stuff. You got church folk doing it. They ain't nothing new from this to now. People still trying to hang on to old stuff. You be surprised. People in the church still trying to hang on. Some stuff is don't. Well, they hard to let go. Don't want to let it go. People got pet peeves. That's the truth. That's true. People got pet peeves. Some things they got, they don't want to let go. Still want to do certain things they way. Don't want to do it. See? Juggy, hardy. People still got things. But he said, they have not submitted themselves unto the rights of God. Paul said, I count all things what? For Paul said, forgetting what? I press what? Every one of you got to forget the best behind. I don't know how bad you want to hang on to it. You got to forget it. You got to let it go. People love to hang on to stuff. Huh? A lot of people love to hang on to pity party. They love, that's a, that's a makeup of human beings. They love that pity party. They won't let it go. They wait for a situation and say, well, it's just me. Then. I knew they won't like me no way. No, that's just you. Your story. So you can let that mess go. Don't nobody go to a pity party with you. The devil don't even come to him. He don't. It's just you. You your own little pity. You, you. Ain't nobody think about it. People don't want to be around that. They see your pity party go their way. People love to hang on to that mess. They love to hold it. I'm telling you, people love the whole attitude. People love to hold that junk. A little piece of it, they love to hold it. I got a brother love to say this. I'll lay this lid in there. That means he don't want to let go of his attitude. <laughs> He wait for a situation to pop up. He don't want to let it go. Because when he said that's stupid, that means I'm going to lay it down and I'm ready to go at it. Well, you can let it go. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. He said, they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. And look how Paul addressed it. Look at breaking it all down. Read. 
For Christ is the end of the law. See, passion. Paul had to deal with them. They were still, some of them were still trying to hang on to some law stuff. Trying to hang on to it. And Paul had to let them know, listen, you're in the church now. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes it. Christ is the end of the law to righteousness. Righteousness now is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Not righteousness of the law. Y'all with me? Amen. Read. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law. Look what Moses describes. He's okay. When Moses described the righteousness of the law, uh, righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by it. That was Moses described. So now, if you're going to live by the law, you got to do all the law. You got to go ahead on back and start sacrificing. And hey, you got to get your tabernacle out there. Huh? You got to do divers washings, daily sacrifices. Once a year, you got to go do your sacrifice. If you're going to do the law, see, you can't do part of the law. If you're going to do it, you got to do it. So Paul trying to straighten them up. Listen, let it go. You in Jesus now. You got the Holy Ghost now. You walk, you walking in a new covenant. Thank you, Jesus. And the law that was given to your ancestors, they couldn't keep it. We couldn't keep it. Nobody could keep it. That's why Jesus condemned the Pharisees. That's why Jesus told the Pharisees, which one of you got an ox in the ditch? Huh? You won't pull them out on the Sabbath day. They were all breaking the Sabbath. They just didn't get caught. But they are judging the ones that did get caught. The woman called in a dudge. They were all sleeping around. Uh-huh. They were sleeping around too. The one that brought her to Jesus. Somebody said, you know, we can't say that. I can't say that. Because Jesus told them, you ain't got no sin, throw the first rock. So they all took off. Huh? Didn't they? They took off. Why? Why did they take off? Because they was in sin. They were messed up. Huh? So, so you're going to keep part of the law? You got to keep all the law. Huh? You got to go back to the high priest. And then what you going to do with Jesus? Jesus is our high priest. So you see, most describe the law like that. Begin to read. Then that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh of this wise. Now look at the righteousness of faith. Read. Say not in thine heart, who shall send it to heaven? He said, don't say in your heart. Now look, these people had all this stuff in their heart. Huh? Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. He said, don't say that in your heart. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. They were pointing this stuff in their heart. He said, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. You ain't got to bring Christ up. You don't have to pull him down. He's in your heart because that's what we're preaching to you. We preach Jesus to you. Thank you, Jesus. Talking to church folks now. Remind you now. Church folks. Huh? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, church people, telling church people, you need to acknowledge, you need to agree fully. If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He said, you ain't got to go to the law for salvation. I have given you grace. I have preached grace to you for salvation. And that confessing, he said, you got to acknowledge and agree fully, Jesus is God. Right. If you're going to be in the church. Right. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Right. If you will be in the church, you must acknowledge, you must confess, yes, I acknowledge Jesus is God. He is Lord. What you going to do with him? Huh? Talking to church folks now. Is he talking to no sinners? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall, I just read it, his for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Church folks. He's trying to get them out of the law. You see what he's doing? He's trying to get them out of the law mindset and get them into the grace mindset. These Roman church people. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto Lord have mercy. What's the key word? Huh? Unto. 
unto salvation. He didn't say confess. 